news, here's what we have in the bulletin. Massive explosion in St. Mary community. Renewed calls for rural bus service for students. And later in sports, Sharika Jackson goes for a 200-meter world record at D Brussels Diamond League. Thank you for joining us. I'm Kalisha Williams, and here are the details. Residents of Scotts Hall St. Mary were left shaken up Thursday night after a massive, massive fire started from a, several Jamaica Public Service utility poles. As you hear in this report, it sparked fires inside their homes and damaged their appliances. No, this is not a fireworks display. In fact, it's far from a celebration. Residents in Scotts Hall, St. Mary, were awakened by the loud explosion of what turned out to be a threatening fire on several Jamaica Public Service utility poles. I was in my bed last night sleeping about 12.30. And when I hear this terrible sound, I was so frightened, I started to tremble. When we come out, fire straight along the line go down. And then, and this meat, this pan at my gate, I believe those catch a fire. If you want run out, I'm scared. And as sparks flew from the utility pole, fire ignited in some homes. Sheba Cameron said she had a close call. The next thing I realized, the plug was on fire. And it started a fire. I was stuck in the house. The only thing I could do is call my boyfriend. And he came and he used a towel and put the fire out. I mean, traumatized. It was traumatizing because... I was wondering what was happening and to be honest, I was stuck. I didn't know what to do. Other residents took quick action, but Ms. Cameron said she was unaware of what was happening until she saw the fire. We have two breakers. So they turned off theirs and ours were still on. So all of the attention came to our house and it exploded. I smell the house burning. When I look, I have three fan and the tree fan went out. I have breaker and the fridge, or and the fridge and the TV, two fridge. And the, all four breakers went out. One resident, Jacqueline Phillips, told us that the community has been having low voltage problems for over two years now. She believes that could explain the explosion Thursday night. A lot of people up that side, then can't plug in two things. If you plug in your fridge, you have to plug out your fan. Or if you plug in the fan, you have to plug out something else because of the low voltage. So I don't know if that could contribute to what happened last night. But what happened last night was really frightening. And so we would want JPS to come with all of that report about low voltage that they have. If they could come in this area to address the low voltage. And according to the Jamaica Public Service, the company is aware of the challenges in the community. But there is a long-standing issue of widespread electricity theft in Scotts Hall, which may affect the service in the area. However, we were told the company will carry out an investigation into Thursday's incident. Finance Minister Dr. Nigel Clark is doubling down on the government's decision to pay the salaries of employees at Stocks and Securities Limited SSL. According to Dr. Clark, the duration of the fraud investigation will determine how long the government will continue paying the salaries. The government is spending approximately $15 million monthly in salaries for SSL employees. Speaking today on the morning agenda on Power 106, Dr. Clark again explained the government's position. We don't want to foreclose on the opportunity that investigators have. This must be an open, a thorough, a complete investigation. And I know that on that score, I have the support of the Jamaican people. What I am, try what I am communicating, however, is that in order to achieve that, which all well-thinking Jamaicans want, we need to keep them there for just a little while longer and that will change as soon as investigators indicate that um, they are happy. 
The 73-year-old who has been charged for murdering her husband in Cabbage Valley District in St. Elizabeth was remanded in custody until September 15. Enid Townsend appeared in the St. Elizabeth Parish Court yesterday where the prosecution reported that the case file is incomplete as the post-mortem report and another statement are outstanding. Attorney Thomas Levine, who is representing Mrs. Townsend, started a bail application and informed the court that Mrs. Townsend developed a mental condition while living overseas. Mr. Levine said if bail was granted, his client would be placed in a facility where she can be treated and monitored. Mrs. Townsend reportedly confessed to using a hammer to strike her husband, 72-year-old Arthur Townsend, multiple times during an argument over his will on September 2. An impassioned plea this afternoon for better transportation systems in rural areas. It comes from Council for the Lawrence Tavern Division, John Mayers, who believes that over 5,000 students in rural St. Andrew are struggling during commute to and from school. Speaking in St. Andrew yesterday, Mrs. Myers said, Mr. Myers rather, said rolling out a school bus system in the division would make a huge difference. Even in one school bus, to run in the morning from 5 o'clock in the morning till 6 o'clock in the evening. From, from border to Constant Spring and even into half a tree. Mr. Myers explained that many of the public passenger buses in the area are crammed with students in the mornings because there are not enough buses on the road. He is appealing for the authorities to intervene. Come with me. And let me sit down and work out a proper way for the coaster buses them to operate. So it you have a schedule for those buses in this rural area, in the right, rural area. Right now there's no schedule. Right now with no schedule for those private bus. President of the Jamaica Teachers Association, Leighton Johnson, is calling on the Education Ministry to consider including deans of, disciplines in, deans of discipline in all primary and high schools across the island. I believe that this is a, 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 an initiative, a program that is effective in our schools and if it is broadened, it can significantly assess, assist with dealing with many of the disciplinary issues that our teachers are confronted with in the classroom. And on the matter of grooming and adherence, Mr. Johnson says so far the new school year is off to a great start as there has been compliance. Year after year we hear this discussion and I must indicate that the majority of the students within our schools conform to the rules and regulations, con conform to the grooming codes. Um, I don't believe there is any school administrator or any school that is engaging in in practices that can be considered unjust, unfair or discriminatory. Better trained and additional tailors should be coming to the labor market within the next few months. At least, that is the hope of the authorities following a move to increase the skill and knowledge level of close to two dozen tiling instructors at the Hart NSTA Trust. The details in this report from Dwayne Anderson. Skilled laborers are in short supply locally and it's especially bad news for the construction sector. But the Hart NSDA Trust's managing director, Tanisha Ingleton, says the trust is increasing its offerings. WorldSkills Jamaica has chosen to partner with WorldSkills Germany to upskill our instructors, our demonstrators and trainees um, in wall and floor tiling. And so um, the, the construction sector is booming and with this kind of boom, it is important that the Hart NSTA Trust is responding with well-qualified, competent and equipped trainees so that they can respond to industry demands. 22 instructors will benefit from this program. The training to be provided through the initiative is described as of a global standard. They are going to be trained at the ISOE and the ISOA levels. Now these are extremely high and critical levels in according to global standards. And so if it is that our trainees are equipped with those base foundational competencies, we should be seeing much better output in the construction sector.
Venice Achana is a general instructor based in Black River St. Elizabeth. She's among those getting the additional training from the German experts. This will give me new ways and techniques that are used internationally and so this will help me to impart new knowledge to my trainees which they will be very appreciative of. What we did was we look at the analysis of the performance of all the member countries over the last five competitions and from that analysis we realized that Germany came in the top two either gold or silver over the last five international competitions and we were searching for excellence and so we brought them on board and they were happy to come on. And um, history will tell you that this is not the first time Germany has come um, to, to help us in terms of development. During the pandemic, we did a number of training with them, including water technology and, of course, welding. The World Skills Wall and Floor Tiling Training Program was officially launched in St. Anne. Dwayne Anderson, TVJ News. And it's time for a break. Stay with us. More stories when we come back. Welcome back to the Midday News and thanks for staying with us. Continuing the news now, residents of Wilmington District in St. Thomas are pleading to the National Water Commission, NWC, to address the water situation in their community. The residents say they have been without piped water for months. They're also raising concerns about water being trucked in the community. Where's the life? We have to literally get water from water trucks. I have not experience water being in the pipe for over a year so that is very primitive and disappointing and this is 2023 and if i want what is me set up my tank and i drop the place it's really let me get water and i pay a water bill to my tenant down here miss betty she just have a little tank on there and i, and I make certain put a pipe in the yard that's where the time when the water is not here we can request the water okay you see when we request the water you don't get any water. You see the water go down there, so you go up there, so you go here, so because it looks like say, it's just special people. Meanwhile, the National Water Commission says the prolonged drought continues to affect water supply in communities like Wilmington District. And it's now time for the Business Minute. With Jamaica exceeding tourist arrival projections for the summer period, the Jamaica Tourist Board will launch a new initiative to increase inbound passengers. Tourism Minister Ed Bartlett says this was the best performance on record for the period. What we are calling a hosted new bias program. This is an exciting new um, innovation that will secure participation from several key airlines and wholesale partners and create inbound travel traffic and create partnership opportunities from Eastern Europe, from India, Latin America, and the Middle East. And these are the four new areas. And we're not in any way downplaying the value of our legacy markets. The International Monetary Fund and the World Bank have committed to increase collaboration in a bid to enhance support for member countries. In a joint statement from Managing Director of the IMF, Kristalina Georgieva, and World Bank President Ajay Banga, they said the multilaterals are committed to delivering tangible benefits for people, businesses and institutions. Climate change will be a core part of the close ties. The statement says the bank and the fund will promote synergies in their climate-related works. And that's it for the Business Minute. I'm Hal Shane Burke. We now go to the top regional and international stories. In the region, Antigua and Barbuda is projected to remain the second fastest growing economy in Latin America and Caribbean region, according to the Economic Commission of Latin America and the Caribbean. Only oil-rich Guyana is growing at a faster rate than the Twin Island Nation, which is still on track for GDP growth of 9.5% this year, before seeing a slight dip to 8.5% next year. The UN Regional Economic Body predicts that most regional economies economies will retain low levels of growth for 2023 and 2024, affected by a negative global and very complex regional economic outlook. On the international scene, 
Hurricane Lee is now the strongest storm in the Atlantic Ocean since Hurricane Dorian in 2019. It more than doubled its wind speed in the last 24 hours, going from 80 to 165 miles per hour. Lee is expected to remain a major hurricane over the next few days as it passes north of the northern Leeward Islands and Puerto Rico. It's too soon to know if Lee will have any impact on the U.S. mainland. And Canada's federal government has named an appellate court judge to lead an inquiry into foreign interference in the country's elections. The announcement comes after months of pressure on Justin Trudeau's liberals to launch a full inquiry amid claims of meddling by China. It will look at allegations of interference by China, Russia, and other foreign actors. And those are the top regional and international stories. I'm Karen Simpson. We head to a quick break. When we come back, we'll have your midday sports report. Jeremy Brown is on standby.